So uh, speaking of big names, we go over to uh, Bell to go over for our storm uh, past week. I know that the Brianna Stewart's been overseas, right? Mm -hmm. Been putting up some impressive performances, but the storm overseas website does not update. So that's, I just know that Stewie is doing well overseas. She's also uh, been busy on Twitter. Oh yeah. <laughs> All sorts of emojis, you know? So Bell, why don't we get into uh Stewie's saga in the off season and just the general storm. There's, there's more news before we get to Stewie, but we'll get to the storm uh, off season here. Yes. So on the 18th, the team reportedly is interested again in free agent point guard, Courtney Vandersloot. Seattle's expected to reach out to Sloot once free agent negotiations be begin on the 21st. A couple days ago, they began. Um, notes on Vandersloot here. Last season averages 11.8 points per game, 6.5 assists per game, 3.9 rebounds per game, and 1.2 steals per game. She was named the Seattle Times 2000 sa 2007 State Player of the Year, Consensus First Team All-State Honoree, and the State of Washington's leading scorer as a senior. She averaged 26 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, and 5 steals per game as a senior at Kentwood High School. I mean... I think that would be a good pickup. And I've heard rumors that Stewie is interested in playing with Vandersloot. I'm not sure if you've heard that. So Yeah, I've I've seen the reports that um wherever Vandersloot decides to sign is where Stewie will likely go, which is very interesting. And yeah. at least obviously we're the Seattle outlet. That's what we're gonna talk about, how it impacts Seattle. We're not gonna talk about how it impacts so so so. Um Seattle needs to fill the hole at point guard. That's Outside of signing Stewie, that's priority like one. That's two. That's two, right? I'm not even going to say one A or one B. Stewie, flat and above, <laughs> number one. Um, you got to fill the hole in point guard, right, Bell? I mean, uh, you know that. But with this championship window, with Stewie and Jewel, I'm not worried about it. But Jewel's still technically, well, this is the second year of her contract, or two year yeah. contract, right? And again, we don't know what Stewie's going to do. So you're basically, you're not you don't have time to develop certain players, right? So Vandersloot would add that immediately. You talked to, I, I wanted to add those key stats about Seattle times, like, cause she's got history in this state mm -hmm. and she yeah. visited with the storm last year anyway. So it would make a lot of sense for that to happen. And it would open the door up to, again, if this report has merit to it, bringing Stewie back. So I mm -hmm. think it's a no brainer. I would have liked to do it even if we already had Stewie. So to fill the hole that Sue left, um, so I, I I would like it personally. Again, it, you look at the stats. It's not like these are necessarily the huge stats at 11 uh, points per game, six rebounds, six assists, four rebounds. Um, but it's a veteran that knows how to win and immediately fills that point guard hole. You know, and I don't, don't you think that Vandersloot would like to play with a Brianna Stewart, with a Jewel Lloyd, right, to get the ball to? So I, I, I think it makes sense. I don't know if you've got any disagreement with that, but I think it makes the most sense. No, it makes sense. Uh, and as you said, there's a pretty big hole that we have to fill. We don't have a starting point guard right now or a bench point guard right now. Um, Brianne January, mm -hmm. of course, retired as well. So yeah. even if they go after someone in the WNBA draft, you've got to learn from someone. And who better than, like you said, a veteran who knows how to win. So um, we move on to some good news here. The team will retire Sue Bird's number 10 jersey on June 11th when the Mystics come to town. Bird becomes the second player in franchise history to have their jersey number retired during the pregame ceremony, joining Lauren Jackson's number 15 in the rafters at Climate Pledge Arena. Other activities to honor Bird along with giveaways and fan activities will be announced closer to the event. Bird spent her entire 21-year career with the Storm playing 19 seasons, the most of any player in WNBA history. She retired as the WNBA's all-time leading assist leader, finishing her career with 3,234 assists. Bird was honored on each of the WNBA's milestone teams, including the All-Decade team, Top 15 players, Top 2020, and was named to the W25 team in 2021 as one of the 25 greatest and most influential players in league history. Bird won a record five Olympic gold medals to go along with four WNBA championships, two NCAA championships, and five EuroLeague title, titles. She was selected to a WNBA record 13 All-Star Games and was honored as an All-WNBA selection eight times. Bird is the only player in WNBA history to play in at least 500 games, starting each of her 580 career games. 
In addition, she ranked second in career three-pointers made with 1,001, third in steals with 725, and seventh in points with 6,803. Bird's importance to the Seattle Storm franchise cannot be overstated. Originally selected as a number one overall pick by Seattle in the 2002 WNBA draft, Bird was with the Storm for 21 of the franchise's 23 seasons of existence. She scored or assisted on 27.5% of every basket scored in Seattle Storm history, including the four seasons she didn't play in 2000, 2001, 2013, and 2019. When only including those games she played in, Bird scored or assisted on 35.4% of all Storm baskets. That was a mouthful because that's a lot of accolades to go through, but I think you feel the same way as I do when I say that I'm going to need tissues that day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, even uh, even the last the last home game, the last regular season home game and the last playoff game that they played, you know, it, I, I, I didn't really want to leave the building, you know, because it didn't feel like it was over. Um I might age people. A lot of people won't get this reference, but there's a there's a particular song in a it's a documentary about a band called The Last Waltz, and it was it was effectively like a Sue Swan song. And I, that song, this particular song, just played in my head for the entirety, like the second half of the season, and even through the playoffs, I was like, each day it could be over, right? It, yeah. You didn't know. We didn't know. Washington put up a good battle there. Um, I didn't really have a doubt that they were going to make the playoffs, but there were times where it was tough. You know, they started out the season and were like five and five. Um, so it, it, this is great and it made sense. But now my next thing is, so when's the statue? Because that's what should be next. There shouldn't be any debate about it. Um, I think it comes down to a climate pledge arena that depends on their land. They've got plenty of opportunity for it. It just comes to where they're going to put it now, I'm sure. But that's uh, that's what should be next. So, yeah, I, I, you you read off the accolades, and I'm sure there's even more you could talk about with Sue, which is pretty <laughs> incredible. But it, yeah, that it's it's hard to say much more about Sue. So uh, my my only thing is when are they going to put the statue up? So I'd like to talk about this particular player getting a statue, but they have to say in Seattle. So we have some more stuff on Stewie here um, as we close out uh, our storm segment. On the 20th, as part of her emoji tweets, Rihanna Stewart will reportedly meet with four teams once free agency opens. Those four teams consisted of Seattle, New York, Minnesota, and Washington. So negotiations did begin on the 21st. Um, the teams were going to visit Stewie, as we've stated that she is overseas. Um yeah, I mean, I don't know what more I can say. I'm nervous. I'm excited to hear more. But um, her not using words on her tweets is definitely making me anxious. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's uh, I don't know if she put anything else out today, but it's like trying to decode these. You know, I, I'm, I'm hoping at the end of it, um, at, at some point, she's able to just kind of say, OK, this is what this meant. This is what that meant, because I have I couldn't tell you. Uh, I know that we the other note, I don't know if you went over. I'm sorry. But uh, Vandersloot will meet with three teams, including Seattle, once free agency begins. So that's already begun. Uh, they've got from now until the first of the month uh, to continue to negotiate since uh, deals don't really come until the first. I wouldn't doubt if Stewie pushes her decision until then, honestly. We might be in for a grueling week uh, in a few days to, to come to that decision. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But that's ultimately your number one goal if you're Seattle. You know, point guard, we just talked about the importance of signing Sloot to bring in Stewie. You have to make sure Stewie is on board. Uh, otherwise, I really don't know where your team goes. You know, um, you look at that list of who she could play for. Seattle, that's a big piece. And then, but still, even after signing Stewie, the Storm have a lot of work to do to fill out the remaining part of the roster, right? To compete. Um I'm sure we'll see some rookies. I know they didn't have any rookies last year. I'm sure this year we we do see some of those rookies. Uh, New York. New York becomes an instant super team at that point. I mean, they've already got John Paul Jones. Sabrina Ionescu's over there. They're going to have to cut some folks uh, in order to bring in Suey's contract. I mean, yes, yeah, Suey. I said Suey. I put Sue and Stewie together there. That's terrible. Um, Minnesota. I don't know about that. I know they pushed for a playoff spot last year. Sylvia Foles retired. Uh, this yeah. past season, they've got some talent on that team. I don't really think that's – I don't know why she put Minnesota on that list. I know they've got a winning pedigree. They're also tied for the Storm with four titles. 
Washington, I mean, to play for Elena Deladon, Natasha Cloud, uh, that would be – that's a solid team as well. But I put Seattle and New York as one and two because I think they're one and two. Put Washington at three, sure. Minnesota, I, I you know. But, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a key part. We'll obviously keep you updated on that. So we're going to run the uh, social media thing at the bottom here. But uh, Bell's got to scoot it. Um, so, Bell, appreciate having you on for this. And, again, I know that we're both stressed, stressed as all-powerful as we can uh, about where Stewie will go. Because, again, we, we talked about it once the season ended. I think even before the season ended, you yeah. know, th this is priority number one and this is the most important. So that'll be I key. I did see some people oh, – sorry to cut you off there. I did see some people holding on to the fact that Sue was getting her jersey retired and people were like, well, now you have to stay in Seattle because you have to say something at Sue's uh, jersey retirement. But if you look at the list, the game that is played on uh, Sue's jersey retirement is against the Mystics. No, no. And we have Washington on the list. I don't so. want to deal with that. No. No, <laughs> no added stress, but just – yeah, you know, there's me. that. There's her most recent true release has a lot of ties to the state of Washington in the mountain range. So there's a bunch of different things that you could point out and look at um, if you want to go towards that route. But yeah, it's it's sure to be really interesting um, as that continues.